Hey, check this out. Could you use a little smile in your day? Or perhaps a little giggle? Does life feel a little nutty? Maybe it feels like you're being flushed down a little potty. Perhaps something's missing in life right now, something little and cute with racing stripes. You might be suffering from CDS, Chipmunk Deficiency Syndrome. We understand and we're here to help. Welcome to a chipmunk tale. The story of the unforgettable summer we had with the chipmunks. To begin this adorable journey, we're going to get started on the right foot, even though that's technically the chipmunk's left foot. According to experts, if you want to make friends, you should figure out the way others most prefer to be appreciated. Many people prefer nice words, favors to help out, quality time, touch, or gifts. But if you want to win over the chipmunks, they have their own category. Peanuts. Chipmunks live in little holes in the ground, so it's easy to find them and leave a parade of peanuts. Giving them snacks and sending them love might put them in a good mood, which could overpower those fear instincts just a little, so they'll be more likely to come around and be friendly. We learned chipmunks appreciate other food too. Here's one taking a pit stop to enjoy a peach. Chipmunks and peaches make a great pair. Here's one having some watermelon. Don't you just love this little darling? Isn't she one in a melon? And chipmunks also love peanut butter, so spread the news. This is Snoop Chippy Chip, and he's acting out a phrase with his hands to try to get us to guess what he wants. He says all the chipmunks are thirsty from being out in the sun all day and they need water. So we provided them with their own doggy dish. There you go, Snoop. So I was working outside all summer and the chipmunks would come around every day to see what I was up to. Sometimes I was reading and sometimes the chipmunks would pretend that they could read too. They'd pretend they could read the big books just so that we'd think they're smart. I kept some snacks around so I could help them stuff their cheeks and make cute faces, which helped me prevent my own CDS chipmunk deficiency syndrome. No matter what's going on in life, you can always get a boost in your mood by looking at something cute. It's like therapy. For example, did you just step in a puddle and get a wet shoe? Well, to help you stay strong, here's some chipmunk therapy. Do you sometimes feel like you're burning yourself out and still people don't appreciate you? Well, we appreciate you. So here's some chipmunk therapy. Or how about this? You have a crush on somebody and they gave you their phone number so you gave them a phone call but you were really nervous so you stuttered and repeated yourself a bunch of times. Then you hung up mid-sentence and now you would do anything to erase that message. Well, you could always have better luck tomorrow. In the meantime, here's some chipmunk therapy. Even though I was working, the chipmunks were unemployed. So I thought I would do something to help them find work. One day I was watching a chipmunk eat in slow motion and the solution became obvious. They could be models. Look at that style. I coached them on keeping good chipper posture and how to strike a pose. Here's some of the greatest hits from their modeling portfolio last summer. Here's Count Chipula, the vampire. This is Chippy Butler, the cheerleader. There's the comedian, David Chippell. This is the muffin. That's Andrea Bo Chippy the opera singer. And of course we have Princess Peach as the girl next door. Let me know who you like best. One day one of the chipmunks looked at me and decided I could use a makeover. So I went along with it. First they gave me the chipmunk tie. Then a new hairstyle, chipmunk punk. And finally we added the classic chipmunk stash. Anyways, not only are chipmunks incredibly good at fashion, they also have amazing physical attributes. They can jump like a kangaroo. They can climb like a spider monkey. And when it comes to running, they are fast and furious. I'm sure the racing stripes help. They're good dancers too. Check out this fancy footwork. And look at these gymnastic skills. That's the chip flip right there. They also have incredible upper body strength. Look at this one arm pull up. Wow. The chipmunks helped us with our fitness too. Here's some bodybuilding exercises using a couple ounces of chipmunk body weight. Here's the shoulder press. There's the lateral raise. We recommend 30 to 50,000 reps each to get chip chiseled. For cool down, we stretch those cheeks by filling them with snacks. And afterwards, we lengthen the muscles with some chipolati stretches. There are a number of other practical uses for chipmunks. First of all, they're fun partners in recreational games like bocce ball. Here I'm giving some sunflower seeds to soothe the sting of defeat. You can also use them as a mini vacuum cleaner. Mm -hmm. 
Here's the little on-off button. Boop, boop, boop. They can also be used for baton twirling. You can use them like a bingo dabber. And chipmunks provide great home security. They are masters of disguise. They blend into their surroundings and they keep an eye on things for you. <laughs> and if anything alerts them, they let out these cute little chirps. Chipmunks are just like little guard dogs, only a hundred times smaller and a hundred times cuter. But if you're gonna spend your summer with chipmunks, you need to know that it's probably gonna be a summer of drama. Here's an actual chipmunk argument. Things escalated and the chipmunks started battling each other. We encouraged them to try and get along. Surprisingly, it kind of worked. As they say, the best way to conquer an enemy is to turn them into a friend. Normally this would have turned into a fight, but now they know that peace is an option. Lots of parties ensued now that everyone was getting along. Here's Chip and Dale having brunch together, and there's Alvin, Simon, and Theodore at the Lakeview restaurant. And here's a whole scurry of chipmunks. We gave them each their own little pile of treats to celebrate the new peace treaty. But one day the chipmunks noticed someone else had joined the party. This is Little Red and they jumped him. You can hear the full story about this on one of my previous videos. Little Red was a little upset because he wasn't doing anything wrong. He was being a good squirrel. I told Little Red, hang in there buddy, I'll get some answers for you. The chipmunks sent Little Chip to the little table to be their spokesperson and explain their side of the story. The chipmunks and Little Red came to an understanding. There was enough resources for all, enough space for everyone. They would just learn to share and take turns. The relationship blossomed so much, Little Red attended a Zoom wedding with the chipmunks. We even had our own flower girl for the wedding. Instead of throwing confetti, everyone threw seeds. All over my laptop, that is. Congratulations to Kevin and Rhea, the newlyweds. Our summer had a few romantic comedies, including this awkward date between Winston and Clementine. They both ran out of patience, and they both ran all the way home after the date. One time we tried to set up Carl the chipmunk with a caterpillar, but seriously, with that many feet, who can afford to take a girl like that shoe shopping? There was also a toad named Chase, and he is considered a personality model, so we set him up with Princess Peach. They kissed on the first date. So after that, his name was First Base Chase. And when guests came over, nothing beats some good old chipmunk comedy. Here's when they helped me prank my mom. <laughs> this is Ryan, and it was his first time ever holding a chipmunk. There you go, man. And here's Ryan, six hours later. And here's Ryan, Ryan's hot dog, and Ryan's nod of approval. My niece Izzy met them as well. She's not legal age to drink, but she is old enough to double fist some chipmunks. Since the chipmunks were always so great at entertaining our visitors, we returned the love and entertained the chipmunks with crystals and gemstones. They love these things because there's so many little nooks and crannies to hide treats for them. Here they are appreciating some fossilized wood. It's been crystallized right through the middle. This is Ontario Amethyst and just look at the clarity of that chipmunk's crown chakra. Random sunflower seed keg stand, just because we can. Sometimes we'd set up a cave of treasures for them to explore. We spent our summer finding happiness and creating happiness for other beings. We could have eaten all the sunflower seeds and peanuts ourselves, but sharing brings more joy. First of all, when you plan out an act of kindness like sharing, it brings good feelings. Secondly, it brings good feelings to you when you actually do it. Third, it brings good feelings to the recipient and others who witness what happens. Fourth, it brings good feelings whenever anyone thinks back to remember what happened. And fifth, doing good makes you feel better about yourself as a person. So here's something that's worth a try. If you want to get happiness, try giving happiness. If you want to help yourself, try helping others. And if you want to feel good, try doing good. You can even extend your sympathies to less evolved forms of creation 
like a little furry potato that lives in the hole in the ground. But you could also leave out a morsel of food for the ants and take joy in their excitement. We can love and support them, just as we are loved and supported by the higher beings that provide for us. You matter. You're awesome. Deep down, we all have a superpower for making the world a better place. You can decide to make a sincere daily effort to be a force for good. And as you develop your superpowers of goodness, you'll find great happiness and fulfillment in who you are being. Because it all comes down to this. When we love greatly, we live greatly.